In this video, we're going to continue our journey in taking a picture from the camera and saving it to the SD card. We're going to do a little bit of legwork here. Uh, we're going to set up our file provider and also the provider paths. In other words, the place where we can store a file. Let's start with that first one, the provider path. If I take a look at my application, the res directory is where we tend to put files that don't compile, things like images and things like XML. You see there's a series of folders here and the one that we need is actually called XML and it does not exist. So let's make one. I right click, I choose new, and then we say Android resource directory and resource type, we're going to say XML and we'll go ahead and call it XML and we choose OK. So if you're looking for an XML folder and it's not there, just make it like I did. Now in this XML folder, I'm going to say right click and um, I'm tempted to do resource file here, uh, but uh, yeah, we'll leave it like that. We'll say provider paths dot XML and these are the locations where a file provider can write to the SD card. So I go ahead and choose OK and we'll give it just a moment. Add to get, no problem. And now let's navigate into this file and I'm going to go to text view. Um, it made some, it doesn't matter what's in there because we're going to make it brand new ourselves. So I'm just going to delete what's in there and I'm going to say question mark XML version equals 1.0 Probably easiest to copy and paste. I'll have this all posted on GitHub and you're more than welcome to use that. Encoding, and I'll put the GitHub link in the comments of the video. Encoding equals UTF-8. Yep, there we go. It kind of gives us a little hand there. And then question mark and then greater than symbol. So a little header tag, just double check, make sure I have all my quotes right. It looks like I do. Now I say paths, just like so. And then I say external path, and you see it's kind of giving me some help as I'm going through here. Name is external underscore files. Path, we're going to kind of take a shortcut here and just use a period which indicates the current path wherever we are. You could get more specific with that and name a specific directory, but that's okay. We'll just leave it as it is. So we start with this, a list of the places where we are allowed to write files. Next, we go to the Android manifest. So double shift, Android manifest. And within the application tag, we need to define our file provider. I'll warn you, a lot of this feels boilerplate or maybe even a bit excessive. So here again, I say, feel free to copy and paste this from my GitHub and modify it as you see fit because what I'm doing might not be what you want. So uh, I say, oh, yeah, uh, yeah, I'm good. I say provider. And again, we let it auto complete a little bit. Uh, okay. Android authorities, we're going to say dollar sign curly application ID curly dot provider. Now, what in the world is that? Well, let me go ahead and save and double shift and go to build.gradle. And take a look at this. Do you see this application ID? edu.uc.jonesbr.plantplaces. So essentially, that is a value that is assigned to this as a property, or think of it as a variable if you want. Over here in the Android manifest, we're simply using a little curly syntax uh, to refer to that value or that variable. Just make absolutely positively sure that your application ID here is the same spelling and syntax as what you're putting in here between the curlies. If it's not, it's not going to know where to put that variable. So when it resolves this, what it's essentially going to do is just take this edu.uc.jonesbr.plantplaces and replace this variable with that value. So this is what it would look like. I'll go ahead and revert it back to the application ID because that's kind of a, a, a little better practice. The application ID in Android is very significant because it's what makes an Android app unique. It's a unique identifier. So you see, here's the listing for plantplaces.com mobile on the Play Store. And you see ID equals com.plantplaces. Now, this is the live plant places, not the one that we're writing in this video series. Note that if I change plant places to just flashcards, if I just make a subtle change there, then it pulls up the plant flashcards app, which also has its own unique ID. Now, your user ratings are tied to that ID. The only way to get rid of user ratings is to release an app with a different ID, which uh, really not a really good way to do it. And that's why I always say that your App Store rating is one of the most important assets that you have. Nonetheless, we're good with that. So let's go in and fill out the name. The name is going to be pretty much the same 
uh, for any implementation. So the authorities, that application ID, that's going to be filled in with your unique ID. But the name is kind of like just a given. It's going to be android.support.v4.content.fileProvider. Whoops. Provider, just like so. Okay, a couple more things that we're going to say. Android.exported, we're going to say false. That means we're not going to make this provider available outside of our application. But wait a minute, I thought the whole point of this is that we want to let the camera have this permission because the camera is what is actually writing an image to disk. Well, okay, so what we do for that is we say Android grant URI permissions true. And that essentially means we are temporarily granting access to this file provider to an implicit intent that we're invoking. I, or, or in other words, some software that we're invoking with an implicit intent. So that's the magic word. That's how we kind of proxy this permission over to something else like the camera. Okay, deep breath. Just a few more things that we need to go here. First of all, uh, greater than symbol, and let's make a separate close tag because inside of these two, we need to have an, a kind of a nested element called metadata. So metadata, and what we're doing here is we're telling this file provider where to find the provider paths XML file that we made just a few moments ago. So metadata, and then I say Android name, and we're going to say Android dot support dot file provider paths. And that one is kind of, you know, that one, if uh, that one is is one of these things that's boilerplate. Yours will probably look like mine. In other words, that line I just typed is not specific to the application that I'm writing here. So Android name, file provider paths. And then after that, Android resource. And we say uh, at XML. And then we say slash provider paths. And you see it auto completes. What that's doing is that's simply referencing this file and it's saying, oh, by the way, Mr. or Mrs. File Provider, these are the paths that you are allowed to access. So we terminate that tag and then we save. Now, at this point, we are good with our file provider and also with the provider paths. We just need to now make use of this. So that's all I wanted to cover in this video, though, just a little bit on file providers and provider paths. In the next video, we're going to implement this uh, by invoking the camera. So if you want to see this live, follow on to the next video. Uh, that'll be in the playlist. Also, if you just look at the time, it's the video I'm going to record after this. So I look forward to seeing you there. Thank you.